Hashtag Ragnow status. Will he play or is he out for sure? He just was not at practice today due to groin injury. Uncertain at this time. It'd probably be a game time decision. That's the assumption I got there. Hashtag FGB. Any early Super Bowl prediction? Is the Lions <laughs> offensive line pushing too hard in practice? That player's getting hurt or the defense too aggressive? You know, we're talking about that, Nicole. Wait, wait, explain what your your maybe thought process is. You didn't hear it in the beginning of this stream, and I, I think you're potentially correct. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if I'm correct or not. I just think Dan Campbell's a little bit old school, and I think he has this philosophy that you really need to toughen these guys up in order for them to make it through 17 weeks of a grueling schedule. And I don't know if that's working out so well for us because the Eagles are sort of employing a different kind of philosophy. Their goal was to have everyone as healthy as possible going into week one. And for the most part, they have. And now we're seeing injuries with less than five days to go. Lions media, hashtag Lions. I think the biggest challenge is covering the tight end, Dallas Goddard. Linebackers desperately need to step up. I can see Dallas Goddard having a really good performance. I agree with you. I I've been, I talked about it all week. That's why I didn't really bring it up as much in this stream. I This dude almost had 900 yards, and it's our linebackers. So it's very concerning right there. I think he could exploit our defense in a big way, but... It is what it is. Someone's going to get exploited, and that's what happens when you have a team that doesn't rely on a whole lot of linebacker play because linebackers' lives matter, and that's a fact. <laughs> Let's see here. Who is starting in place of Big V? I think it's going to be Logan Stenberg because Tommy Kramer is eat up, you know, ate up as well. So correct me if I'm wrong. Does anyone think that's different? Have you heard anything different? No. No. I think he's the no, right choice to do so. And, and I, again, I wouldn't be worried about that. People saying it's taken him two years to get in the team and that. Sometimes it does. Especially, like I say, when you're dealing with technical issues out of college, sometimes it takes a lot of time to fix. But if we know one thing that Hank Fraley can do, it is next man up is ready to go. So I'm, I, I'd be quite happy to have him in there. At the very bare minimum, you're going to get a guy who fights his ass off every play, and that's what you need this week. Especially in the wrong game, so yeah. Hashtag yeah. FGB. Thank you for that. Hashtag FGB. It's always FGB. Do you all think we should have a female head coach? We're gonna go Rumble, then Anthony, myself, and we'll leave Lionor of Douchebaggy last because she is the female here. What do you got, Rumble? Yeah, if if, if she has the knowledge that uh, Nicole does, I think so. I think why not? I think I think women can can lead men when it comes to. A lot of things in life, especially, uh, you know, sports and, and you know, just a philosophy. But, you know, all to Nicole's credit, man, she knows her stuff, man. You're a great A. If we had a head coach like that, I'll be all for it. Let me know in the comment section why for yes and for no. Female head coach. Let me know what you think on this one. Anthony, what do you got? Well, as Rumble says, if, if the people are good enough, if a, if a woman is good enough, if she has the knowledge to do so, then yes. I mean, we have sort of the same thing over here with soccer at the minute. It's been a conversation for many years now as to whether women can coach in our men's professional game. And slowly as time goes on, it is happening a little bit more. Fair enough, it is happening down at the non-league level at the minute. But the conversations are getting there more and more. And there are a lot, of, especially with the growth of the women's soccer game over here, there are a lot more getting involved in football. And I think it will happen eventually. I would assume, because, you know, obviously from bit over here, I don't know the grassroots fundamentals of the NFL and everything over there, how many get involved already, et cetera. But it is just about taking time, growing again, and eventually, yes, it'll happen. So, you know, if someone is deserving of it, it doesn't matter who they are, they should be able to do so. I believe they should be in the kitchen, not just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Make their food. No, look, we had Matt Patricia as a head coach. <clears throat> Yes, I'll take a female <laughs> for like all day. If you can hire Matt Patricia, he could get a head coaching job. Hell, I'll take Nicole right now, head coach over it. Look, she knows more knowledge about the game than he ever will. All right, the lady on the panel. Should we have, at some point, female head coach? No. I don't, I, I don't like it. I know that not every coach played the game. Most of them did play in some capacity, though. And really, you know, watching Hard Knocks has really sort of shown 
what big personalities these guys are. And I know it's not every coach, but every good football coach does have a big physical presence in front of those guys in order to lead big physical guys. And I'm just not sure a woman can do that. I'm not sure she should. Hey, I tell you what, I don't know if you guys know who China was in WWE. That was a female you didn't want to fight with. <laughs> she would be like, I got a neighbor who takes steroids. She's a female bodybuilder, and she's scary. She's bigger than me. She is a scary human being. So yeah, There are um, exceptions I, to the rule, certainly, yeah, but in, in general. Yeah. I, I went to the gym, and I seen her. I so, said, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Hashtag, I'll take a sheepdog coach over Matt Patricia. That's hashtag facts right there. Absolutely. What about female, Nicole, about offense or defensive coordinators? Yes, yeah, same thing. I mean, I can see some assistant coaches, certainly in the training room. But, yeah, those big position coaches, coordinators, I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think it's a great idea. I, I just don't know that men are going to completely – respect someone that can't do what they're asking them to do because in general you want a coach that if he's telling you to do something he's not asking you to do something he wouldn't do himself you know he's getting down in there with you look at dan campbell with his up downs and in general again there are exceptions but yeah I, i'm not sure that's that's the right role there is the legends league out there that that's a one possibility to do some recruiting um, I'm not sure really how that works out. Let's see, which player would you say needs to improve the most? I'll go ahead and start on this one. The most improved player to me is got to be TJ Hawkinson. He's got to stay on the field. He's got to make plays. This is going to be a contract year for him for sure. I just want to see him be able to be on the field for 17 games. And there's not really excuse this year. We got weapons around. It's not like he's just the one out there. I want to see this man improve and make his money who do you got roar Lion, uh yeah oh who do you got there line rumble why did i say roar line rumble. oh i'm sorry um yeah i think uh my guy uh it's got to be the defender uh it's got to be okuda uh high draft pick again one of those guys who we have yet to get a full season out of what i think is total games played is what under 10 or if i'm not mistaken so uh i gotta see i gotta see why we picked him at number the number so high so it, it's gotta be him for sure who do you got anthony see again this isn't a cop-out mic but i think there's a lot of them I, I think it's more than just one guy here you know Julian Aquaro and Austin Bryant both need to pay off the investment we're putting in them because they've not been consistent or good enough so far. The guys who are coming back off injury, Akuda has to prove that he can do it this year. Levi has to prove that he can be, you know, more than injury prone there. Right? Again, I just don't think it's it's down to one guy here. Given the way our team is built, we don't have those kind of elite superstars knocking around on mass at the minute. This is a collaborative team effort and. Yeah, there, there are just quite a lot of guys who have to prove themselves this year. What do you got, Nicole? Yeah, I'm going to go with Derek Barnes. I mean, mostly because I think it's very possible Anzalone's not around for very much longer, and he's sort of the leader of that unit at the moment. I know everyone loves Rodrigo. I do, too. I think we're going to see him flash a lot this season, but he's still a six-round rookie. Uh, Derek Barnes wore the green dot in preseason. I thought that was really telling about the role they want him to play going forward. So if you want to take this linebacker and make him sort of a leader of the team, I need to see him take a step up. That would be nice for sure. Hashtag lines, how many yards and touchdowns do you think DeAndre Swift will have this season? Oof. I'll go, I'll go 750 yards and five touchdowns. What do you got, Nicole? All-purpose yards. Oh, all-purpose yards. I, I was, yeah, I'm not sure if just rushing or, or all-purpose yards. Well, hey, you can add, but you can add a lot more of mine. 1,500 <laughs> all-purpose all yeah. yards. You know, touchdowns. Man, between 8 and 10 would be nice. What do you got, Amman? Well, if he's not over 1,000 all-purpose, then bye-bye. I'm, I'm kind of the same. I kind of want, like, 
13 to 1500 all purpose yards, 10, 12 touchdowns. He is meant, you know, we need him to be a difference maker on this team from the running back room. So the expectations are high. So yeah, about 13 to 1500, 10 to 12 touchdowns. That will be a good year for him. What do you got, Rumble? Yeah, 12, 12 to 1400. I'm right there with you guys. I think um, we're definitely going to need to see flashes from him too, man. Uh, you know, maybe hopefully a couple of uh, one more than a couple one hitter quitters, meaning one one handoff and he's gone. Um, and definitely that that pass out of the backfield, uh, the screens and whatnot. So, yeah, man, uh, maybe maybe eight to ten touches. I would like to see that. I would like I, I think he has the capability of doing so. Again, that's only like one or two every other game. So I don't see why he can't do that. I would like to see Levi Amuzurike step step up in a big way. I'm concerned about this back injury, though. Like this is something that I'm I'm not happy with, and I feel like Brad Holmes. He stated that he knew about the injury and he still drafted him. Nicole, what's your thoughts on this? He knew that he had a back injury, and somebody that deals with back injuries, you know, it's chronic. Some that you you deal with for a long time. What's your thoughts on that? So let me preface this by saying I still have total faith in this front office, in homes we trust, but this is something I'm questioning with him, his, his propensity for drafting injured players in general. And the fact that they knew about this injury beforehand, and then didn't he say he actually played more than they thought he would given the injury? That's not what he told us. So yeah back injuries tend to be a little chronic i'm worried about um, Rike going forward i'm worried about pascal i'm worried about a lot of these guys that we knew were injured in college and he drafted them anyway that should be the exception not the rule uh, anthony why the hell are we drafting injured players i i know you're like me you're fed up man i'm absolutely fed mm -hmm. up with injured players on this damn team yeah, it, it, it's really frustrating. And like I say, Holmes is not infallible to mistakes. You know, we've seen that quarterback is not exactly a position they can really do well with. But I mean, the first thing he said when he got here, you know, him and Campbell both believe as the trenches come first, that's where you have to build first. These are the guys you have to go out and get. And I mean, for me, I guess the defensive tackle class wasn't the best last year when we were drafting. There wasn't depth to it. I feel maybe that there is a propensity to want to go out and get these guys, even if they're not quite healthy, you still want to draft your D lines and your O lines first, you know, with, with Levi, I know he say he wants to go even higher, but Levi has the versatility on the line to play inside. You know, he was, he was played out of position at Washington in college, but he showed that he can play at nose, showed he can play a little further out. You've got the versatility there. It's the same with Pascal. You know, he can play out of the five tech. He can play in at the one if you need him to. And I think he's seeing these guys who are like, right, these are really versatile guys across the line. I know there are some injury issues with them, but they kind of fit what I want in my trenches. And that is what I want to build first. So I think sort of you're getting a byproduct of that, maybe. It's just, it's maybe unlucky that we've got these guys in there. But way they're drafting them and who's coming after them, there's not really much coming after there. So. Yeah, it, I don't know. It's confusing. They, I just think it's maybe unlucky here. Like I say, they like their versatile line, guys. Demetrius Taylor's the same. Plays all across the line. They, they have a type, and I think it's just unfortunate we've come across some who have injury worries. And I, I fully believe they don't think these injuries are, are as serious as they actually are. I mean, like a back injury for a D lineman's a killer. And you should be like, right, we've got to be really careful with this. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just a bit of a... I don't know. Uh, yeah, I am a little worried, but I think maybe here it was just they want the linemen first. They went out and get them. Health be damned. Two people took a lot of heat after this draft. Luke G and T.A. of Rod Detroit because there's concerns. And guess what? There is concerns. Drafting injured players is not a recipe for success. And if you knew he had a back injury, like he said, that's bullcrap. We can't screw up these second-round draft picks. We can't do it. Yes, we can get the undrafted guys. We can get the sixth rounders, the seventh rounders. That's great. But we got to stop this concept of drafting players who has a, a history of injury because the best ability is availability. 
And there should be criticism towards Brad Holmes in this. And it shouldn't be a bad thing for people to criticize him. It's not He doesn't do everything right. This is a problem. And hopefully this up-and-coming draft, he doesn't do this again. If you know a player has an injury significant, like a back injury, to a big defensive lineman, you know this is going to be a problem because it's something that deals with for the long haul. This is not something that happens, and it's just gone. It's not, it's not an insignificant injury. Got to stop this.